TLS is go for purge sequence four. And there will be a steering check of Atlantis's three main engines. find now that the main engines are in their start position. TLS is go for ET LO2 pressurization. Starting now the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent arm, the vent hood. TLT OCC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. Fuel cells going to internal, external tank camera being activated at this time. OTC, PLT, no unexpected errors. Copy that. Flight crew OTC, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. That's it, Mark. T minus two minutes. TLS is safe for ET LH2 pressurization. Solid rocket booster camera is being activated. Minus. Sound suppression water system is being armed. T minus one minute. But oxygen and liquid hydrogen fill in drain valves are closed. T minus 40 seconds, handing off to Atlantis's computers at T minus 31. T minus 35, 33, will hold at T-minus 31 seconds due to a failure. And we have had a failure. Grand lot sequencer. We had a problem on the three track switches. And anti DSP. Go ahead. Yes, sir, we need uh, guys to go do the verification per the LCC, please. All right, CMAC. Yes, CMAC, the LCC says we need to verify using a camera, and we're positioning camera 62 right now. Okay, let us know as soon as 62 is swung over and you can verify LCC for GVA retract, please. And all personnel, we're holding here 31 seconds while we get a verification that the GVA has fully retracted. For our pre-plan. This is CMEC, we verify uh, retracted. Okay, and you can verify that it is fully retracted per the, uh, the instructions that we've been, uh, that we developed, correct? That's correct. All right, and SPE? And NTD, SPE concurs. They satisfy the requirements of GSC 13 pre contingency. I am go. Okay, I copy. And launch director. Yes, sir, I heard all that and concur. Press on. All right, very good. NTD, SP. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I need concurrence to GLS and mass to clear the hold, please. Very good. And GLS, you have concurrence? Go. Copy that. It's in work. Thank you. Let us know when that's complete.
Nancy, do we have any work? All right, guidance. Just remind us, folks, our uh, watch going back hold time is 3 minutes and 16 seconds. MTD, CTLS on 212, we're ready to go. All right, very good. And launch director, with that cleanup, we're going to go ahead and proceed. Yes, sir, please do. All right, and all personnel, we are going to pick up the clock here momentarily. And GLS, you can resume the clock on your mark. I copy that. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. He might have hand off to Atlantis' computers as a curve. And we the booster nozzle still checking the work. Firing chain is on. Go from the engine start. He might have 10, 9, 8, 7. Booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The main engine steering the shuttle on a pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already traveling 3,200 miles an hour, 35 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange. The propulsion officer reports the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Atlantis kicking on its afterburners for 1 minute 23 seconds for the final phase of powered flight. Atlantis, two engine towel. Two engine towel. That call from Capcom. Single pane day, so in the event of contingency, you're in plane plus 2.30 on the ECAL page. No comm VIs when you're ready to copy. Okay, in plane plus 2.30, go ahead. Press to ATO, 10.8. Press to MECO, 14.7. Press to ATO, 10.8. Press to MECO, 14.7. That's a good read back, Atlantis. Because of the slightly late launch time, Capcom Barry Wilmore reading up to pilot Doug Hurley the updated abort boundaries for Atlantis, which is flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's large fuel tank. Three and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis traveling 4,200 miles an hour, 54 miles in altitude, already 120 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. 
three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells for Atlantis. Atlantis, negative return. Negative return. That call from Capcom Barry Wilmore indicating that we're too high in altitude, too far downrange to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. However, Atlantis's three engines performing perfectly. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis currently traveling 5,500 miles an hour, 62 miles in altitude, almost 200 miles downrange. Four minutes of powered flight remaining. Atlantis speeding straight as an arrow toward its date with the International Space Station Sunday morning. Coming up on the five minute mark. Atlantis now traveling 6,500 miles an hour, 66 miles in altitude, 250 miles downrange. Atlantis, press to ATO. Press to ATO. That call indicating we can make minimal orbital targets in the event of an engine failure. All three engines continue to function normally. Atlantis will begin its slow roll to a heads up position shortly. Five and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis traveling 7,700 miles an hour, 315 miles downrange. Atlantis, single engine, Ops 3. Single engine, Ops 3. And the guidance officer here in Mission Control confirms that the computers are commanding the main engines to swivel. Single engine Zaragoza 104. Single engine Zaragoza 104. We've rolled to a heads up position now, providing better communications to the tracking and data relay satellite system as Atlantis heads uphill. Six minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis press to Miko. That call indicates that we can make our normal orbital cutoff targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. Nominal. Fergie, go the plus X, go the pitch. Nominal set down plan. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch. That call indicating uh, that we will be in good shape uh, for the uh, orientation of Atlantis for external tank uh, photography following main engine cutoff. Now seven minutes into the flight. One minute, 20 seconds till main engine cutoff. Atlantis traveling 12,000 miles an hour. The main engines will uh, soon be throttling down once again to limit the stress on the shuttle and its four crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Atlantis currently traveling at a speed of more than four miles a second. One minute of powered flight remaining for Atlantis. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells. Approaching the eight minute mark into the flight. Atlantis now traveling more than 15,000 miles an hour. Eight minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, standing by for main engine cutoff. That'll be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. For the last time, the space shuttle's main engines have fallen silent as the shuttle slips into the final chapter of a storied 30-year adventure. 
Now standing by for external tank separation. Atlantis off the tank. Commander Chris Ferguson will be maneuvering Atlantis now into an orientation to enable Sandy Magnus to capture digital still imagery of the external fuel tank as it drifts away. So, ohms 1 is not required. Your preliminary ohms 2 TIG, 37 minutes. 37 minutes. Uh, no ohms 1 required. Thanks.